Welcome to the Talent Culture Podcast. Learn how the most innovative companies implement culture and make it part of their strategy. On the Talent Culture Podcast, we're interviewing business professionals on how they prioritize onboarding and culture, bringing our own expertise and experience from working with dozens of companies on exactly this. The Talent Culture Podcast is an actionable strategy guide that can either help you implement these strategies in your company or learn how you get buy-in from executives. Your host is Søren Bolvi, CEO at Impact. Enjoy. Hi, Thomas. Welcome to the show here. Uh, okay, Thomas, um, could you tell me a bit about where you're working best seller? Yes, um, but maybe just from the start, because I started four years ago in, in Bessela as a people partner in uh, finance and service facility. So working both with the blue collar and white collar. Then uh, two years ago, I took over the responsibility of uh, of our region, North. We cover it, Switzerland, Germany, Norway, Sweden and Finland. And then today I have the responsibility of uh, people, we call it people, not HR. Uh, but people in Amsterdam, our e-commerce, uh, where I have a small team of five uh, dedicated uh, employees. And then I, of course, have uh, data analytics and finance as a people business partner. Uh, could you t- maybe tell a bit about the company you're working for? Bestseller is a Danish uh, family-owned company. We operate in more or less all countries, not uh, east of uh, Europe. And uh, we also have Bestseller China, we have Bestseller India. And then we just started up in the U.S. Uh, with some of our brands. We have uh, right now 12 brands. Our most famous brand is Jack and Jones, only the Almuda and maybe name it. How, how, how did you land up in Bessalon? What's your journey? Uh, my journey is actually I was a professional handball coach. Um, and then um, there was another finance crisis, not the crisis that we have right now, but the finance crisis. And uh, my current club, club at that time uh, went bankrupt. Then I started as a uh, consulting um, and worked for bigger companies as an external uh, consultant, working with leadership development, um, uh, people, business partner roles, uh, recruitment, you know, the uh, HR agenda. Then I was in a network with the former uh, people director in uh, Vesela, Line, who is now uh, leading up uh, HR in Sister Nagane. And uh, she called me and asked, is that time now for a real job and not a consulting job? And then I had a meeting with my, my current uh, boss, Thomas Berglund. Uh, he's the CFO in uh, Vesela. And that was uh, quite exciting because he... Uh, He saw uh, HR development, he saw people development, he saw that, uh, you know, being in the business was needed. And I thought that uh, it was a good fit to my, uh, my, my personality. Sounds like an exciting journey. Yeah, it's uh, a quite exciting journey. So when I started four years ago and until now, I have, as I said, several positions, uh, different roles, uh, because we actually like that in Bessela to have growth opportunity to rotate, to transfer, because we think also that one of the topics today is that that's a retention uh, action for people who want to, to stay longer in, in the company. Yeah. Oh, and what about, if you look at your, your current job, what are your main priorities right now? What's on your desk? What, uh, you know, what is it that really you're looking into each day? Yeah, I think we have several key focus areas right now. We have, of course, um, attraction that include recruitment, retention, and then uh, people development um, is top of mind right now. Okay. Could you maybe, maybe what what is it that you do different when it comes to, the, the, you know, how do you attract the people? In, in, in maybe also, as Libu see it, maybe a difficult market right now, or how do you see yeah. it? For sure, it's a difficult market, but we also have seen some changes the last uh, five, six months uh, because of the war in Ukraine. Uh, 
some of uh, the company that we are competing against, uh, they are letting go of people right now. So if we look just five months uh, in the past, then it was really difficult to, to hire. Uh, we made only, we might only had uh, two or three candidates to uh, to an open position. Uh, today we actually have twenty or forty uh, candidates to our uh, our job market. What what we do different, uh, and my perspective is that if I look outside bestseller, then you know we people or companies do a lot to attract people. But I think that we also need to focus on the people that we have because they are our ambassadors in the market. So if they are happy, satisfied, engaged, motivated, passionate, uh, then they are mine or Bessler's ambassador to tell a good story about our company. Because when we are hired, then if I go and make a job application or a job uh, requirement, then I have uh, my network on LinkedIn and uh, also so other social platforms. But the colleagues who have to be in peers, that could be a controller in finance, that could be an admin, we need their network to be activated. So I prefer to have a look at the people that we have before we look outside the market. So, so you're more or less looking into uh, that the people that, if there you have um, people that are happy at the workplace, they will also work as ambassadors and that it's easier to attract and you know retain the people that, uh, that are coming in. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, so what what do you what do you then do for retaining them and developing them? Is there specific programs or how does it work? And how also interesting how does it work across countries, maybe across brands? Yeah, and and that's um, that's a bit complex when you look into bestseller because the countries are more independent, our brands are independent, and then we have group uh, the group perspective. Uh, what we do different is that we have development programs for all employees, depending on their growth plan. So if we start with the, with the managers, then we have in top management level, then we have uh, education model, but it's more individually models. So that could be that for for one uh, one manager, he needs to practice his communication skills. Uh, and another maybe a change management skills. Then we have smaller teams because if I look back and um, the way that I was I was also a trainer before, then you know it's uh, normally it's fifteen to twenty four people in a, in a in a room, and then we have uh, uh, some some kind of development. We only have six in in one uh, development track, so that could be six six leaders, six managers, and then. Is quite focused on some topics that we think find needed for for all, and then we have then I prefer to have five or six smaller teams running because the nearness, uh, the way that we can uh, mentoring, uh, the, men, the the way that we can coach people is much better. So that's the leadership part. Then we go into uh, to specialist tracks, and we have accelerator. We have a two-year program for our top top talents. Then we have uh, senior programs. We have junior programs. We have business understanding. So we have several programs running at the same time. Okay. Because if we look at the trends and we look at the data, as small as we can develop, rotate, and transfer people around Bessera, then we see a trend that people will stay in the company for more than two years. That, that sounds sounds interesting. What yeah. that made that I can understand the model working for you know maybe people that are in the office. What about more the desolate workers, the ones maybe in the stores? Is this the same model or what do you do no. there at that place? No, um, and that's where the the independent part comes in because if you see the stores, then Jack and Jones are independent, so they have their own education. Then we all have their own education, and then only and all the soft brands they have their own education. So that could be a training, a sales sales training. That can be marketing training. That can be, yeah, trainings in in the business need in a specific area. So I don't cover that part. So that's more independent. Okay. And and if we look at the numbers, then we have an ambition that the, our people turnover have to be less than ten percent in. In 
the three areas where where I'm supporting. Uh, right now, if you look at the last financial year, we just ended our finance year. It was fourteen point five percent, so that's that's okay in the market where we are right now. If we look at the brands, then it's near thirty percent. Some some in some brands, yeah. But they also have student workers. They have um, uh, blue color, and they change a bit more and a bit, bit oftener. And then you see some some of the young people. They have uh, they have a job for two years, and then they want to study again. What about when when you do the education plans or the retention plans? How, how do you actually measure the progress? Is there some set of KPIs, or is it more individual based? Or how do you do? Yeah, that's a good question. We I think we we have several point, KPIs where we can measure that. We can um, if we talk, if if we start with the, with the managers. Then we have a survey twice a year where we can see the engagement in in the team, like an uh, APB uh, workplace evaluation that, that we have twice a year. Uh, there we have some some question regarding how the managers is performing, uh, you know, like a three hundred and sixty leadership survey. So there we can see the progress in in that. Uh, then we can see when we have uh, new leaders when they are growing. Then we can see if they adapt the the way that we are working. Um, if we then look at uh, the data that we we uh, we have, then uh, we just have um, a dialogue with uh, KMD, the Danish uh, provider of data, where we put all people data into one 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 sheet. So you 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 might remember when we were young, then we have these football cards or or. or or cars with cars, <laughs> where you yeah. can see horse powers, uh, miles per hour, and so forth. Then we can see of, of an individual basis that uh, that could be you saying, okay, this is your score card. Then you have an average number saying, this is uh, what is your average performance. And then we have indicators in in that score card where we measure several uh, several things. So that's that's a new uh, new initiative that we just have started. So I hope that uh, we can benefit of that. That sounds interesting, uh, but also may- maybe uh, how do you, how do you also maybe in my years maybe time consuming or I'm wrong there or how do you come around that topic with with the data? Yeah, yeah, and also do it on an individual level. You know, having this this scorecard on each person or a uh, isn't that time consuming or is it just uh, time consuming to set up and then it just flows or yeah, it's it's time consuming in the beginning. I think that we spend a lot of time in the beginning where we have all the data in in uh, in, in in the system. Yeah. But when we have the data, then it's quite easy because then you know twice a year we also have the people uh, people review uh, with all the, all our employees. We have uh, the growth plans. Uh, we have the indicators of uh, of a survey, people survey, and then we just they are just interlinked in in uh, in the system. So you know when we have the, when we have the system and we just have to, to push one button and then it's updated you know just more yes, yes. Yes. okay what what about the whole, one of one of the topics that a lot of companies are working with is this what should I say one is the the professional skills and how how are we proceeding for example as a manager or with the communication leadership skills that you said before what about the whole cultural fit is is there a a mechanism for that too, or a, a matrix for that too? Yes, um, we have like a like a spider web where we are looking into a behavior, uh, where we have a scale from one to five. That could be a role model uh, you need to improve. We have uh, we can measure about how do you uh, communicate? Uh, are you a team player? Then we have ten founding principles or values you can say. So that's also interlinked in that. So how do you actually live up to the culture that we are aiming for? Uh, so yeah, we have, we have that integrated in in our systems. Okay. And then you know, in in the performance review, then we have we are looking at and two axes. We are looking at the skill set, and then we are looking at the growth potential. And in the growth potential, there we have interlinked our culture, our values, our our ways of working, our behavior. What what about what about this this you know this culture? But this because that's always been an interesting topic. You know, having high performers on the 
the, the professional skill set, but performing less on the cultural side. Uh, yeah. how, how do you handle that? I know that because you know sometimes you you are if you're performing well or you're let's put it the other way earning the money, but you have a cultural you know or a behavioral that's maybe not totally fit in the in, in the best of a system. How do you handle this this conflict? I actually don't have any cases where we had an employee who had that skill set or that mindset saying that I'm I'm off. Uh, in terms of culture, if we had, then we invested as and we we say we actually hire people and then we can build competences. Because let's say that you have a really good salesperson who drives uh, 50% of the sales, but is an idiot, just yeah. to be honest. Then if they are working in a team, then you know the team can be limited, limited of the the behavior that one uh, person have. Then sometimes when you remove that person or uh, have a behavior talk, uh, maybe a warning. Then we see the team is growing quite significant yeah. and then they will perform. Because if you have one, let's call it just an idiot in, in your team. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Then the performance will be normally low with the other team members. And if you have one in your team who is quite noisy, then the manager spend quite a lot of time with that one person and sometimes forget the rest of the team. And if we then lose the rest of the team and you have one, <laughs> one stupid guy left, then I think we are then we then we not didn't live up to our our values of our managerial role. No, I, I totally agree. But sometimes it's a it's a difficult decision, maybe. But I totally agree that's the way it should be. Uh, yeah. uh, so I'm I'm just curious. Where, where do you see um, this uh, model you're working with um, expanding maybe in one or two years? Um, do you see that uh, you're going to measure on more parameters, less parameters? Or, or how do you see it evolve? You know, normally I like the measurement tool, but you know, we can measure too much. <laughs> yeah. So we need to keep that in, in balance because I, my, my personality is that I, I, I actually believe in people. Uh, until they they show that they can't live up to to the requirements of the standards, uh, both professional and behavior wise. So so it's 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 a balance to measure. Uh, some some people like to be measured, and other profiles don't like to be measured. Mm -hmm. So we need to find that that balance, and that's the tricky part. And then when you said we want to expand, I don't think that we want to expand uh, how many people we are but we want to grow our processes and systems. Because if we look at the trend line, then you know people get over, older and older and we have uh, young people uh, coming in and they want different ways of working and there are not so many of them uh, like we have as, as older people. So you know, I think we have to find ways, new ways of working instead of just growing uh, uh, one business unit to from 100 people to 200 people. That's not what we are aiming for. We are actually trying to have high quality, high speed, and one ways of working, standard procedure, and then make it uh, make more automation and digitalization. Well, that's that's that's, that's interesting because um, I I recently read a survey that. Um, I know that I don't know. It's not maybe your area, but maybe it's interesting for at least for bestseller point of view. Is that if you look at the digitalization, the whole uh, spending on software, we can see that I think it was one or three percent was only spent on the deskless workers, even though they are far the majority, and a lot of software is spent on the rest of the company. So, do you have any other programs going on there that said that we would like to connect the you know all the deskless workers or how do you see that topic? Well, when we are right now, then we have too many manual processes. So, so we need to find other ways of uh, of working with robots or what it could be. We will not come to a point where we uh, we don't have people hired in 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 finance or uh, take IT or data analytics, uh, but we need to be more flexible, agile, more mature in the way that, that we are working.
And then if you look at bestseller, then we're not first movers because we want to see other companies make the mistakes before we take take the step. So now, now we have a new finance system. Now we have a new uh, HR system. And for some companies, they have had that for many years and we are quite unmature on that level. So we still, we still have some low-hanging fruits on, on that part. So we will not come to a point where we have full optimization and digitalization, digitalization and no people running the processes. Uh, but I think that we could have at least 70% of our standard processes automated. So so, so it, it, I think that that's a natural development for a company. One, one, one topic that's actually interested me also is that you were saying that you have, a, you know, all your brands are uh, uh, driving more or less autonomously. So I'm thinking about when you come to digitalization, how do you then secure that some sort of synergies between the brands? Yeah, if you look at in a, in a group perspective, then you can say our people system that's uh, integrated in all brands, all uh, functions. The same goes for our finance system. Because we cannot have three or four different finance systems across uh, the company. So you know the the big uh, the big processes uh, from IT to uh, to people to finance we need standardized processes, and they are fully uh, aware of that and they are 100% supporting that. Otherwise, it's just a mess. Uh, so so that's that's defined. Then you can you can say smaller process that could be uh, you know a marketing um, tool can be more independent uh, in, in the brands because they are independent and we have to see them as small companies competing against each other. And then they don't want to share the same system because then they they, they think that they can see each other's uh, uh, KPIs in the, or the indicators or whatever. So we need on a, on a top, top, top level, we have one way of working, and then when we go into smaller processes, then they are more independent. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on, on this, this talking about automatization and, and um, efficiency driving and so on? Do you have any, or are you occupied also with any overall metrics for it? You know, how to measure the progress or is, how is that done? Yes, we have a, a KPI to uh, building from finance where we measure on uh, on five five key elements. So that could be system and processes. That could be standard languages. That could be um, standard procedures. Uh, if they are compliant, if they have house in order, if if we, you know we have red, green, and, and yellow like uh, like the traffic light. So yeah. are they on track or are they off track? And they need a score. I think it's uh, about four point five in a. In an in a five scale, otherwise, uh, you know, we have we have a chicken. <laughs> okay, so there's a tension on it then. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a control, but you know, a chicken. How can we help them uh, yeah. be better in the future? Okay. So, and as I said, as we are quite unmature, just just an example of that. Then you know, Bessel is a global company, but if you work in, for instance, Italy, they they don't speak English. No, I can't imagine. But uh, yeah, that is. That is that maybe sometimes that's being global, but there's also a charm to it to, to keeping you know the, the the original language and keeping you know everything interesting in, in, in that area. But um, yeah, yeah. so 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 it seems like like there are a lot of things to do in, in bestseller also with the, you know you're not first movers, but it, it seems like there there's a lot of work still going forward. Yeah, that, there's uh, there's a lot of work um, also in the future for the for the next many years. Uh, there's a lot of work. Um, and, you know, if you look at the bestseller, I think that we only have 1.5% of uh, the market share. You're talking 1.5% globally or? Yes, globally. Okay, still. From so we have still some growth potential. Yeah, yeah that's, that's sure. But it's also, yeah. so is there an ambition of having 10% then or? No, we don't. Uh, we don't have any ambition to, to grow uh, in a significant uh, ways of, of the numbers uh, because right now we have we have a solid company. We're doing good. We uh, you saw you might saw the annual report the annual yeah. report last week. So you know we have a really good company and uh, and we still want to have that. And if we have that, if we had ten percent, then we might not have a, had a better company, but a more complex company. 
and that gives some other challenges. Maybe, maybe if you, if you would say maybe uh, two or three words, what what describes bestseller best? We are quite pragmatic in the ways that we are working, and uh, if we want to change something, we just do. So we are really good in what to change and then just go do. And normally we say we can do it by ourselves. So, you know, we don't have uh, external consulting uh, supporting us. We just uh, try and fail, fail one more time, and then uh, go uh, two steps back and then try one more time. And then uh, if you look at our our structure, so uh, I think that uh, all in, in, in our company, you can call Anders Hull Poulsen, uh, the, one of the founders, not the founder, yeah. his mother's founder, but... They can call him and say, "I'm not satisfied with this, or I'm really happy about this." Uh, so you know the structure. Uh, there's no not a hierarchy saying that uh, this is top and this is low in in terms of that. So we quite we have a quite flat structure. It it sounds like a cool company to work in. Uh, I must say, uh, I really like it. Um, I'm really happy. Uh, So I think that I'm I'm one of those who don't look at at a job outside this salon, uh, one of one of many uh, at least. So I'm I'm super happy to work in a company where, you know, um, if you just do your job, and that's also said by with respect because you know we uh, we get paid. So you know you have to perform, uh, and if you perform, then you know flexible uh, flexible ways of working. Uh, Uh, you can work from wherever you want. You can work uh, day and night. You can work, yeah, whenever you want. And and I really like that approach. Sounds for me like cool company. Yeah, it does. Thomas, it's really nice having you here. Um, enjoy the rest of the day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This was the Talent Culture Podcast. Thank you for listening, and see you in the next episode.